coming from the farthest reaches of the universe. To challenge the worst toy repairs on Earth is the most powerful hero ever, Toy Poloi. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Ploy. And in today's video, we're going to be doing a little bit of everything. We've got some repairing to do, we've got some customizing to do, we've got to make a replacement cape, all for these adventures of Indiana Jones figures. Because I've been really enjoying the uh, modern retro collection versions of these figures, but there's a few that they haven't yet made. And one of those is one that I've only just got in my collection, which is Salah. I picked him up on a trip to uh, Japan. I was very surprised to see him there, but it was one figure I didn't have. And so I finally managed to get him. But I do actually have a few other Salah in my collection which don't look quite as good as this. In fact all of them as you can see here are missing arms and they are also missing their robes. So today's project is going to be sorting out replacement arms for these figures and then we're going to make some new robes for him that match the uh, vintage original one that you can see here. So first up let's uh, see what we can do about replacing the arms on these figures and I'll tell you why they are missing in the first place. So why do I have so many Salas with uh, missing arms? Well the answer to that is that I was very kindly sent a bag of uh, the remains of some uh, Adventures of Indiana Jones figures by Ryan who'd been using them to uh, customize and make sort of custom figures and he'd made uh, some custom Temple of the Doom versions of Indy and to do that he had used the right arms of these Salah figures because uh, the Indy figure obviously needed a bare right arm uh, but I've now got these in my collection and Salah was a figure that is actually quite hard to get here in the UK so as I say I picked this one up in Japan and uh, I was pretty pleased to find him. The torch is not actually an original that is from uh, Matt Squatch Customs he also made the little snakes and stuff that you saw in the intro there so uh, that's a very useful thing to have if you've got one of these figures and you need a replacement I'll put a link to his uh, Facebook group uh, in the description but so yeah so I've got these salas and I thought well now that I've got an original one I can easily make a cape pattern but I've got to sort out these figures first and um, what we're going to do is make arms for them or find some replacement arms now I always have a bag of sort of broken Star Wars figures and that's my first place to look is to see if there's any sort of Star Wars arms that I can use uh, but the problem is that not many figures have bare arms. The Rancor Keeper has bare arms. He's got some sort of gauntlets on, but they're really muscly. And um, yeah, the Rancor Keeper is another figure that's actually fairly hard to sort of come by. So in my spares box, I've got a few arms. Uh, neither are going to be particularly right. This is a uh, Leia Organa arm, which I think is probably the closest from the ones I've got because it's about the right length. You don't see much of the arm. Once the uh, robes are on, you just see his hand at the end. So I think that one probably will do and I'm actually going to put that onto one of the figures. I have this uh, B-wing pilot arm again it's sort of all right but it's a bit long you can see if I sort of put that in the right position it hangs down a bit far so that one I'm not going to bother using. I've also got um, a Luke Jedi which is in a fairly rough condition I'm not sure what's happened to him but it's been sort of sanded on the front so most of the body and the legs are no use but this arm isn't too bad. Again that looks about the right length so I'm going to take the arm off this one and I'll put that on one of the figures and by the time I painted up the hand it will look fairly reasonable I think. Then the best option is actually a Power of the Force 2 figure and that's the uh, Luke Dagobah uh, figure which is the only figure as far as I know that actually has sort of fully bare arms with no uh, embellishments on it or no details. It's a little bit muscly but it's actually going to fit really quite nice. It's about the same sort of flesh colour and um, I think it will fit fairly well. So that's my real hope is to use the uh, Dagobah uh, Luke arm. And I think by the time that's on, you can see if I hold that like that, it doesn't look too bad at all. But how are we going to get these arms on? Well, the answer is boil and pop. And I've shown this um, many times before on the channel. Basically, we're going to dunk the bits that we want to push into the old salad bodies into some just boiled water and let them warm up. The uh, plastic that they're made of will then soften and we can push those into the armholes. It will require a screwdriver and stuff just to sort of push them in. Some of them may end up being a little loose so we might have to wrap some PTFE tape around but I'm hoping that on the whole we can get all of these arms in and it will be the same process to get this arm out once we put this figure into some just boiled water and let it sort of warm up the plastic on the arms will soften and I should just be able to pull this arm out of its socket and then push it back in place. So let's get all of that done. Once they're all fixed we can then sort out making a replacement cape for this figure. So uh, yeah let's get the arms fitted. <laughs>
And here you go, these are the uh, replacement arms and they don't look too bad. That's uh, Leia's arm. I think by the time I've painted that hand the same colour, it will look pretty reasonable. And again, everything is going to be hidden by the uh, new robes that we're putting on. The uh, Luke Jedi arms, you can see it's the right length and that's really what I'm worried about. You've got the hand at the end, that's again, by the time that's painted flesh colours, it will look pretty reasonable. Uh, the best of the bunch is by far the Power of the Force 2 Dagobah Luke arm. You can see that really doesn't match too badly. Getting the Power of the Force 2 arms is a lot harder than on those vintage figures there's something about the plastic that just doesn't tend to go quite as soft as that so it actually took quite a lot of effort to pull the arm out of the uh, figure and then once it's out you can pop them in these uh, vintage figures fairly easily uh, the post is also a little bit too long so you can see here i can pull the arm out and there's a bit of a gap there but again, it's all going to be hidden, so I'm not worried about that at all. Uh, you know, the overall effect on that one, though, is very convincing. I wish I had more Dagobah Lukes to uh, swap the arms out. Maybe in future, if I find some others, I will come back to these. But um, for now, they're going to be fine. All we've got to do is paint up the hands. So I've got some uh, Humbrol flesh colour here. I don't have any Vallejo flesh colours, but this is the Humbrol flesh colour, which is um, number 35. Uh, and I've just put some of that in my palette here. It doesn't look like it needs mixing with anything. I was thinking it might need a bit of extra white in it, but it's actually a pretty good match. All uh, paint makers make flesh colours, so just grab one of those and sort of mix up as you like. And once I put this on and it's dried, it will be a matte finish, so I do have a satin uh, finish to put on as a top coat. But let's paint these hands up and then we'll start doing the uh, robes. Now that those are all painted, you can see um, it's not going to look too bad by the time we put a robe on. It's got a nice flesh coloured hand there. I've also painted up Leia's hand. Yeah, so those are going to work really nicely, but we need to make his robe. So this is the, the one that I have with the original robes. And I've just taken those robes off and we've got to turn this back into a pattern that, so that we can then make some new ones. So to do that, we need to turn this inside out so that we can see where all the seams are. And um, hopefully we should be able to then redraw this uh, in a way that we can make something from it. So let me uh, turn this all inside out and we'll see if we can sketch out a pattern based on this original set of robes. So you can see it's not a particularly complicated shape. They've got a bit of extra fabric sewn in there just to sort of give a look of a shirt or something underneath. We may not do that part, but I might have a go at doing it. Otherwise, though, it is just one single piece. So you've got a sort of T-shape that's been folded over. So the back of it is the same with a little bit of a neck hole cut in the top of it. They have put a seam around the edge of it there just to fold that bottom edge up and sew along. Likewise, on the sleeves, uh, this type of fabric I'm going to use, it may be that we don't actually need to do that, but I'll uh, sort of put that all on the uh, uh, pattern as I go. So, yeah, what I've got to do is, is copy this. So I'm going to start drawing some lines on this bit of paper and then I'll get sketching away. Once I've got something that looks right, I'll then transfer that into Photoshop and make a final pattern. Okay, so there you go. That is the basic pattern. As you can see, I've just sort of traced it out and added a few bits because we're going to do a little hem along the bottom and on the edge there. And we've got a seam to go all the way around here. 
it should uh, work pretty reasonably and you can see that that is essentially a flipped version of the, this back section just with a, a neck hole put in and then to get the other mirror what I'm going to do is when I cut this out I'll fold it all up and I'll cut it out and I'll just sort of uh, make sure I've got these two bits folded together so when I cut it out we'll end up with the uh, mirror image of it and if that all works as I say we can take this into Photoshop but I think what I'll do first is I'll cut this all out and I will make myself a version of this just from this rough uh, sort of diagram that I've done here and we'll see how well that works. I've got some material that I think will work which I'll show you in a minute but um, yeah let's get this all cut out. And there we go, there is the uh, prototype pattern. Now for fabric, I'm going to be using stuff called toy knit or looped fleece. It's more the sort of material that they used for uh, sort of Jedi era Star Wars figures. Uh, what's used on this figure is fairly sort of thick and more like a sort of jumpery type finish I'm going to say uh, and I couldn't find any material that was exactly the same and I really do like the toy knit loop fleece it works very well so I've got some in my sort of uh, pot of materials and this is the colour I'm going to go for I buy this stuff off AliExpress I'll put a link in the description as to where I get it and you can see the colour is not too bad I do have another sort of version of this loop fleece which is a little bit more sort of creamy coloured which I also quite like so I might end up making a couple of different versions but this stuff from, from AliExpress is a nice colour. So what I'm going to do is uh, pin the pattern onto the material, cut it out and then uh, do a bit of sewing. For this prototype version you can see here I've added a little bit of extra sort of at the top and the bottom for doing some hemming and around the edge of the arms. I don't think on the prototype I'm going to bother doing that. I thought I would cut those a little bit shorter and then we're just going to sew around this edge bit here and sew around this edge bit there. Uh, do that sort of on the inside and then turn it the uh, right way round and we should end up with a robe that will look quite nice. We also need uh, a cord to go round his waist and I've bought this stuff which is a sort of a nicely sort of made woven fabric cord. Um, so yeah let me show you that. You can buy all sorts of stuff that just goes down in your sort of local haberdashery shop and see what they've got but you can see this has got a little sort of a, a woven uh, sort of pattern to it makes it look a little bit like rope and I thought that was going to be quite nice and again it's a pretty good colour so uh, I'm going to sew a piece of that onto the back of it I'll probably tie the ends of it because it looks like this will fray quite easily in fact you can see it there it's sort of coming undone so I'll probably tie some knots at the end of it but I reckon we'll end up with something that looks really good so uh, yeah let's cut this pattern out and do some sewing.
And there you go, that's uh, not looking too bad at all. You can see I just sewed along that edge there and that one there and turned it the right way out. On the back I've sewn a bit of cord and a bit of cord I've sewn fairly high up as well. You can see it's just under the arm line uh, and it's not particularly long. It's about the same length as the arm. So let's try this on the figure. Here is Salah. This is the one with the uh, layer Organa arm. So I'm just going to raise his arms up. We'll tuck him in there and see how it looks. Yeah, that is not looking bad at all. It fits really nicely. It's about the right length on the body. It's also the right length on the arms. And you can't actually see that that is a layer Organa arm as I had expected. Uh, it is completely hidden away. I've got the cord around the middle. Yeah, that's looking really nice. Let me bring in the original so we can compare it. Do you know what? That is not bad at all. For a first go with my sort of prototype pattern, that's looking really good. It's about the right colour as well. I'm very happy with that. So now I'm going to take this pattern into Photoshop. I will work up a final version and then we can make a few more based on that. But for now, yeah, I'm very happy with how that's looking. That really does do the job nicely. OK, so the pattern is now done. You'll be able to download that for free from toyploy.com. Uh, there are two ways of using it. The first way is to uh, use it like I showed here without uh, doing the hemming at the bottom. I have marked hemming on the pattern. So if you want to have a go at hemming it, then uh, please do. You just need to hem along the bottom of the skirt and around the armholes. If you're not doing that, then just cut the arms a little bit shorter and cut the uh, skirt a little bit shorter and you'll end up with this version. So I have made some other versions now. So here is another version using the different colour fabric that I showed you at the start. So we've got two slightly different versions. I think both of them actually look really quite nice. Not quite sure which one I prefer. This just adds a little bit of variation. This one is probably closer to the original colour, but yeah, they all look really good. And then I have done a fully hemmed version as well. So you can see here I've hemmed all along the bottom and all around the armholes. That makes it look again a little bit closer to the original, but there's a lot more work that goes into it. But as you can see, I've now got four versions of Salah, all that look really nice. And I can't I can't actually tell just from looking at them here which ones have which arms. I know this one has the Leia Organa arm. This one here, if I roll up the sleeve, uh, that has the Luke Jedi arm, but it is completely hidden. You wouldn't even know that that had been replaced. And then this one must have the uh, Power of the Force 2 version of Luke Dagobah's arm. So, yeah, we have got uh, some versions of Salah saved from the junk heap. So what was uh, some sort of uh, remains of uh, junk figures that had been used for uh, customizations? I've now resurrected, and these can go uh, back in my collection, of Adventures of Indiana Jones figures. And that's it for this project. I do need to say a massive thank you to Ryan, who very kindly sent me in the remains of these figures. I've had great fun working on all of them. I think I've now worked my way through all of the bag of stuff that he sent me. So do check out some of my other uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark and uh, Adventures of Indiana Jones projects because there's been uh, some quite fun stuff going on there. I think all of the ones here, apart from uh, the Salah at the front, are ones that he'd sent and I've now sort of worked on in some way or another. So hopefully this video has been of interest to you. If it has, then make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell to be notified each time I upload a new video. And thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Ploy. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Ploy on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram.